Hi, I'm Steve Greathouse. I'm the Employment Assistance Officer for the Maryland National Guard. Today we're going to cover what you need to know to find a job and advance in your civilian career. And everything we're talking about today can be found on our website at md.ngb.army.mil. Once there, click on Guard Member Services and then Civilian Employment Assistance. That's us. There you'll find all sorts of tools. The first article is called Job Searching While You're Deployed, Good Information If You're Deployed. The second article is called Unemployed or Underemployed? Question mark. Start here. That is where you'll find a review of everything we're going to cover today. Also on the Tools tab, you'll find a variety of different tools to help you with your resume and other items. And on the Resources tab, you'll find resume and cover letter examples. All right? So let's get started. Step one is to watch this video. Use the information that you learned today to either create or improve your resume. If you still need assistance, give me a call or come by my office at 5th Regiment Armory on the third floor in the education office. What we'll do there is we'll gather some information about you, we'll figure out what your short-term needs and long-term goals are, and we'll figure out a plan to get you from where you are now to where you want to be. We'll also talk about a little bit more about resumes. We'll talk about job search tips and techniques, how to network, some guerrilla job search strategies. But then we'll develop a basic job search plan. Once we're done with that, we're going to, I'm going to send you an email with a review of everything we talked about, and I'm going to attach a GSC questionnaire. That's a Guard Support Center questionnaire. What I want you to do then is take your best stab at your resume, and that Guard Support Center uh, questionnaire, email those to the email address that I give you. We're going to assign someone to help you really make your resume awesome using those two documents. Then we're going to develop an in-depth roadmap for success to get you where you want to be. Beyond that, we're going to stay with you until you get hired. They're going to track your progress there at the Guard Support Center, and I'm also going to continue to network on your behalf with my employers here in the Maryland area. So I'll be sending you direct and indirect job leads each week. Okay, let's talk about civilian resumes. First of all, it's always good to have a resume. Keep it updated. You never know when you're going to need it, even if you already have a job. There's a variety of resume formats out there, and really it just kind of depends on your unique situation as well as just your taste, what looks good to you. Um, one thing I want you to remember, if you remember nothing else from what we talk about today, your resume is never done. Never. You have a base resume, which you're going to customize for each job you apply for. Let me tell you why. For every job you see on the internet, there may be three or four hundred other people applying for the same job. Well, guess what? Civilian hiring managers do not read three or four hundred resumes to fill one job. It's not enough hours in the day. Most of them use software that looks for keywords in all the resumes that were submitted, and then it sorts them by those with the highest keyword match. Most of the hiring managers I've talked to say they only print out and read about the top 20. That means the other three, four, five hundred people that applied for that job, no human being ever will gaze upon those resumes. So when I hear people say that they applied for 50 jobs last week, well, if they did, they push submit, 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 submit the same resume. Probably a waste of time. So make sure that you tailor your resume for each job you apply for. And how do you do that? It's very simple, actually. When you find a job online that you like, and that you're interested in, and that you're qualified for, or almost qualified for, print out the job description. Then read it again with a highlighter in your hand. Anything that seems important, highlight it. Even if you don't know what it is, if it seems important, highlight it. And then what we're going to do, open up your base resume, save it as the name of the company dash the job title, and 
and then start working all that stuff you highlighted into your resume. It doesn't really matter where or how, get it in there. Now, having said that, I do not mean just plop it in there. Because while your first goal is to get a human to read your resume, once you do get that human to read it, it's got to make sense. So where you're going to put a lot of that information is in the bullets for your previous jobs. Um, but it doesn't really matter. But you need to get it in there. And wherever possible, when you work those things into your resume, try to give an example of how you did those things and even a positive result from when you did it. For example, if uh, a job description you're looking at mentions that you must be an expert in Microsoft Access, great. So in your resume, it's not enough to just say, uh, familiar with the basics of Microsoft Access. What they're looking to see is a bullet or more than one from d different past jobs where you utilize Microsoft Access to create a database that did this, this, and this, and resulted in a reduction in this or an increase in that. That's a positive result. So think in terms of working all those important things from the job description into each resume. Yes, it will take some time to do each resume, but actually it'll get faster and faster as you go. Because as you apply for a job today, you might go, oh, well, you know what, I, that's just like the job I applied for last week. So maybe you open up that resume version and use that as a starting point, and maybe you only tweak that one for 15 minutes or so and you're done. So it'll get faster as you go, but it's not unusual for you to spend a couple of days working on one resume for one job. It will be worth it. You'll get a lot, a lot bigger return on phone calls for interviews. So keep those things in mind. Okay, so let's start at the top of your resume. First of all, let's talk about email addresses. Don't be cutesy with your email address. I helped a gentleman one time. His email address was the Irish Gunman. 459 at Hotmail. Not okay. How about a combination of your first and last name? Maybe a number or two. That's a much better way to go. And by the way, if you want to use your military, your AKO address, that's fine, but make sure if you do so that you don't have any problems accessing AKO. So you may want to use a civilian uh, email address. Now, so we talked about the fact that your first goal is to get a human to read your resume. Great. You've got a good contact area at the top. All your personal information at the top of your resume, professional sounding email address. Great. Now, what, what is a hiring manager looking for? You've made that cut. You've got a human to read it. What are they looking for? Most of the hiring managers that I talk to say that once they get those 20 or so resumes with a highest keyword match, they print them out, they rock back in their chair, and they give each one about one minute. One minute to decide whether to put you in the call for an interview pile or the mm, probably not pile. One minute. In those one minute, that one minute, they're looking for three things. First and foremost, does this person meet the minimum requirements for the job? One minute to figure that out. All right. Well, one technique for getting that information, making it absolutely clear right up front to the employer, is to use what I call a, a summary of qualifications or summary of skills. You have a heading and you show how you meet or exceed the minimum qualifications for that job. All jobs have something listed in the job description that you see online that says something like, um, basic requirements or minimum qualifications. Well, why not at the top of your resume show them how you meet or exceed each one of those? I would even do it in the same order that they list. So try that out. By the way, a lot of people like to start off with an objective statement on their resumes. Okay, maybe that, that could work based on the type of career you're looking for. But you know what? A lot of the hiring managers I've talked to would rather you do desired position for the job title, the name of the job. Here's why. If you, if you look at resumes all day long, 
dozens of them every day. You know, all those objective statements probably start to sound pretty much the same. I'm looking for a job where I can utilize my unique skills and abilities to make a positive impact on a whatever. It's fluff, isn't it? Isn't it really? So if you want to use an objective statement, okay, great. I encourage you though, if you do, make sure that you write your objective statement in terms of the employer's benefit, not so much yours. Employers only care what you want as much as they think it will make you happy and fulfilled and do a good job and stay there a long time. But try to focus on writing that objective statement in terms of their benefit, not yours. Okay, so let's talk about your past jobs. Now, most civilian hiring managers I talk to, looking at your blocks for each of your past jobs, they like to see bullets. It's fast. At a glance, they can get the gist. But you can also use paragraph style if you want. Now, one thing I'll say about bullets, make sure that the first bullet you use for a previous job is an overall description of what that job was. For example, if you're listing your military employment history and you were an intelligence analyst, great, I know what that is. You know what that is. Does that civilian hiring manager? Maybe not, probably not. So. Make sure your first bullet for each of your previous jobs is an overall description of what that job is. So that you create a context for the rest of your bullets. Okay? So you've got that overall bullet, then you have two or three more with a little more detail about your duties and responsibilities. Now, remember when I said there were three things they were looking for? That first thing was, does this person meet the minimum qualifications? Second thing, is there something special or unique about this person? Well, here's where you get to do that. Make sure that you have as many as possible, at least one, what I call accomplishment bullets for each of your previous jobs. What's an accomplishment bullet? That's where you basically brag about something that you did at your past job that was above the minimum requirement. For example, I created uh, a marketing program for the such and such program which resulted in an influx of this many new members, something like that. You're basically describing either a process you created or improved and what the positive result was. You could also talk about an award that you, you received. Uh, you could also talk about just something nice that your boss said about you. By the way, your past employee evaluations great, great information that you can use to make some of those accomplishment bullets. In fact, here's a freebie for all you military people. If when you put on your dress uniform, you have something up here, some kind of awards. Well, I'll tell you what. Here's one that you can use. Receive numerous awards and citations for performance of duties well above the expected standard. That's an accomplishment bullet. You're bragging about yourself. You're a highly decorated soldier or airman. Great. That's what they want to see in a resume. And by the way, if you're familiar with George Costanza and Leaving on a High Note, he's a character from Seinfeld. In one episode in a meeting, he accidentally said something brilliant and clever, kind of funny. And everybody laughed and looked at each other like, wow, he's an impressive guy. And then he, he knew it would just go downhill from there. So he thought of an excuse, and he left. He called it leaving on a high note. Well, guess what? Your resume is the same way. So I would make sure that each of my previous jobs, I ended with an accomplishment bullet. That way, by the time they finish reading your resume, they think you walk on water. And that's what you want. OK, so you can use bullets or paragraph style. Make sure you have plenty of accomplishment bullets. And by the way, when you talk about your military experience, there's a lot of different ways that you can put that information on your resume, kind of based on your own situation. So we can talk a little bit more about that one-on-one. -on -one. But one thing I want you to consider is to not use military jargon too much in your resume. It's okay for you to translate military terminology into layman's terms that a civilian can understand. And by the way, you who are infantry guys, I'm a former infantry guy myself, 
don't get me wrong, I was proud of all those HUA schools too, but you may not want to have a bullet that says something like, my job was to close with and destroy the enemy in close combat. I mean, that's pretty cool. But it might freak out that 35-year-old soccer mom that is the HR manager that's interviewing you. So tone that stuff down just a little bit um, and make sure you're translating so everybody understands what you're talking about. Make sure you focus on things, skills that they're looking for. You've done a lot of that in your job. You can also check out ONET, about.com, coolarmy.mil. Those sites allow you to plug in your MOS, your military specialty, and hit enter, and it'll give you a whole series of bullets already written for you. And you can use those to write your own bullets for your resume. And by the way, one of the best techniques I've found is actually just doing a Google search. Like, what is an Army 19 Delta, for example? That was my first job in the Army. If you type that in and choose the aboutmilitary.com search result, typically it'll give you one or two very well-written paragraphs in layman's terms that you can use to write two or three really good bullets. So check that out. So let's talk about federal resumes. When you're applying for a federal agency, you no longer have to use KSAs. In fact, you can really use any format of resume that you want. But there are some things that you definitely want to include in your federal resume. Now, I want you to use the same principles we talked about for that civilian resume. You're still going to use as many accomplishment statements as possible. You're still going to brag. Give them all the information that you would in a civilian resume, just a little bit different formatting. So let's talk about how that works. If you look on usajobs.com, you can download a federal resume example. We've had the best results by far just using that format. And if you'll notice, it uses paragraphs with complete sentences instead of bullets. Great. So it won't take a whole lot of work to convert your bullets from your civilian resume to complete sentences, full complete paragraphs. You're still using the same principles though. So you're telling them overall what your job was for your previous jobs. You're also giving them as many accomplishment bullets as possible. You're also working in keywords from the job description. But here's some extra things that you also want to consider. For example, for each of your previous jobs, you need to write who your supervisor was, what their current phone number is, the words, yes, it is okay to contact, your salary, number of hours worked per week at that job. Also, what I would add to the top of my resume is something about your veteran status. Now, as a, as a guardsman, you're not necessarily, by federal definition, a veteran, unless you have served at least six months on active duty while not in a training status. Now that is how the federal government, for hiring purposes, defines a veteran. What I would do if you are a veteran is put something like veteran status, colon, five point military preference, or if you have an award letter for VA disability, of, then I would use 10 point veteran preference. I would also put a semicolon and then if you have deployed to a combat zone since 9-11, you're eligible for Veterans Reemployment Act benefits well, as far as hiring goes. So I would put VRA eligible if you have deployed to Iraq or Afghanistan since 9-11. That is a huge, huge advantage. Basically that that allows you to be hired as a direct hire without even putting the job ad out on the internet and allowing a bunch of other people to apply. So that means when people like me, for example, get leads from my federal hiring managers, I can just send them your resume and they can call you in for an interview. If they like you, you're hired. Start Monday. So it makes it a lot easier. Also, if you have a secret clearance, definitely put that on your resume. That's huge. 
especially in this part of the country. So if you have a secret clearance, put current secret security clearance. If it's a higher clearance, like a, a top secret or a TSSCI top secret as, uh, with poly, make sure you put that information in there. Because a lot of jobs require those clearances. And by the way, when we talk about federal resumes, don't worry about length. Your resume is going to be long. Don't worry about it. Now, don't get carried away. Don't write a novel. But when we talked about getting those keywords from the job description into your resume, that's even more important with federal resumes. In fact, aside from just that job description, highlighting that, getting those keywords in there, guess what happens? When you apply for a job on USA Jobs and you click apply, the first thing that pops up is a questionnaire. And that questionnaire asks you to rate your skills on a variety of areas that relate to the job you're applying for. Use that as a cheat sheet. Definitely print that thing out too, highlight it, and work that stuff into your resume. And by the way, if you rate yourself as an expert in something, make absolutely sure you have several examples in your resume of how you've done those things and a positive result. Also, if you really want a particular federal job, I would also find the position description for that job. Now you can find it, sometimes you can Google and find the position, position description, which is basically just a longer version of the job description that you see on USA Jobs. But there's a website that you can go to, AC Poll 2, website is here. Find that website. You may have to do a little detective work to find the one you're looking for. It's not really user friendly and you may have to use a military computer in order to access that site. But if you really want a particular job, I would print out and highlight the questionnaire, the job description, and the position description. I talked to a couple of federal hiring managers and they told me, look, you don't realize how many people apply for some federal jobs. Sometimes we get over a thousand resumes for one job. And she said, you know what? It's not always just the people that get an interview that are the most qualified. She says, actually, mostly, it's people that know how to get enough keywords into the resume to make the software cut. Now, having said that, not all federal, res federal agencies use the software. I talked to a person recently who says that they don't. They actually read all the resumes. Okay. Well, I would still try to get those keywords in there. Why? Well, because when someone's reading it, if you're addressing all the key elements of the job, more likely you're going to get a call for an interview. So definitely get those keywords in there. Let's talk about cover letters. People ask me all the time, Steve, are cover letters necessary? When should I use one? Well, the answer is, it kind of depends on the situation. But definitely, if they ask for one, sure, you got to give them one. Now, while a a resume is very formal. In a resume, you never want to use I or me or my. You just start with the adverb. But in a cover letter, it's a little bit less formal. So you can use those terms, but use them sparingly. And while you want to be, use a little bit of heart, inject something a little bit personal perhaps, don't get carried away. Keep it pretty professional and keep your cover letter pretty short and to the point. Definitely one page. In fact, what I recommend is, is an easy, short format for a cover letter. It can be something as simple as three short paragraphs. That first paragraph, two sentences is fine. That first sentence, say something nice about their company or agency. And then your second sentence, tell them what kind of job that you want or this particular job that you want at their company. Simple. Second paragraph, this is basically where you're going to give them your 30 second commercial. Five or six sentences where you tell them why you are qualified for that job you told me you want and why you're awesome. Five or six sentences. And by the way, this is your 30 second commercial that you basically need to have in your head all the time while you're looking for a job. In case you run into somebody and you 
want to network with them. You want to tell them what kind of job you're looking for, why you're qualified, and why you're awesome, 30 seconds or less. Same basic principle with a cover letter. That's your central center paragraph. Now, your last paragraph, inject a few words from their homepage of their website. Most companies have some kind of a tagline or their core values that they put on below their logo or something like that. If possible, try to inject a few of those words and maybe even put them in italics so that they recognize them. For example, if you're applying for a job with Booz Allen, one of Booz Allen's marketing taglines is, we help our customers see, hear, and innovate. Okay, so maybe your second to last line in your cover letter would say something like, I look forward to the opportunity to assist Booz Allen in seeing, hearing, and innovating on behalf of its clients. Something like that. Why do you do that? Because it makes you seem like one of them already. That's a good thing. Last paragraph or last sentence, ask for an interview. That simple. So cover letter, Keep it short and concise, a little bit less formal than a resume, so you can use some me and my and I, but get to the point fairly quickly, use a little bit of heart, and that'll be a good cover letter, a good introduction of who you are. My number is 410-576-6177. My email address is steve greathouse2 at ng.army.mil. Definitely check out the resources on our website at md.ngb.army.mil. And feel free to come by my office anytime, the 5th Regiment Armory on the third floor in the Education Office. My office hours are Tuesday through Fridays at 08 to 1600.